welcome back to Real Real Reviews. This is Cody Williams, and we're here to talk about the first season of Loki. As we initially thought, we were led to believe that this show was going to be a one-and-done limited series until Marvel officially confirmed this morning that we are getting a second season. So that's definitely some good news to hear. Don't worry, I want to keep this review as vague as possible to relieve any worry of spoilers. Set after the events of Avengers Endgame, an alternate variation of Loki escapes for the Tesseract and falls under arrest of the Time Variance Authority, a bureaucratic organization that exists outside of time and space that monitors the timeline. The TVA then gives Loki an ultimatum, face being erased from existence due to being a time variant or help fix the timeline to stop a greater threat. When comparing to the other shows that Marvel has put out on Disney+, Plus like WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I would probably have to say that this particular show outdoes them both. I know that all the shows work in tandem setting up the next phase for the MCU, but I definitely had the most fun with Loki. I don't necessarily know why exactly, but if I had to guess, it would probably be the reason that we get the foundation laid down for the next big major antagonist to fill in the shoes for Thanos after he got wiped away from existence in Avengers Endgame. I don't want to say who because of spoilers, but if you really want to know, just watch the show all the way to the end, or you can also look up the cast list for the new upcoming Ant-Man sequel. I'm not knowledgeable about this new antagonist that's being set up, but after reading some articles online about him, all I can say is, color me excited. I may have mixed feelings about the season finale of Loki, but for the most part, I really had a fun time with this show. Despite the fact that there's only six episodes for the season, there's no doubt of a mystifying experience that truly has a glorious purpose in the whole grand scheme of things. As this series helps pave the way for future MCU projects in a tremendous manner, I'm wholeheartedly excited for the upcoming films featuring the multiverse, which includes the new Spider-Man and Doctor Strange movies that are set to release this year and the next. I've always enjoyed Tom Hiddleston as Loki ever since 2011's Thor film and other numerous MCU movies that featured his character. We've seen him pull off some amazing feats in the past films, but in this series, however, I feel like his character was nerfed to an extent for the sole purpose of moving the plot. Say what you will, but I have nothing else to say about that. Right when the first episode reels you in, you know immediately what you have in store for yourself. Even though you may know this series about timey-wimey stuff, it's still fun trying to figure out the mystery behind everything as Loki himself ventures out to uncover the secrets behind the TVA as the episodes go on. By the time it's all said and done, this show is a grand adventure. Since the multiverse is set in motion at this point, we get to see many variations of Loki himself and other side characters involved once you get to episode 5. Won't go into specific details, but episode 5 is a complete hoot, and it's probably my favorite episode out of the whole season. I enjoy the finale to a degree, but how can you leave us with a cliffhanger like that? I get the general purpose of a cliffhanger is to leave the audience thirsty for more, but maybe I expected too much. So, that may be entirely my fault. Just like in between each episode that was released weekly, I guess the end game of it all is to keep the audience theorizing on what could possibly happen next to any up the hype even more. I have to say that I really enjoyed the wondrous and extravagant looking set design throughout the series because I was completely awestruck by everything from the TVA to the many locales used throughout. Just from the display of it all, you can definitely tell that hard work went into development. Speaking of development, I really enjoy the writing for the script and whatnot. Everything just seemed to flow natural as we discover the many twists and turns that is presented upon. Heck, even the line delivery by everyone was exquisite. When it comes to the co-stars, we are gifted with Owen Wilson, who is a fantastic and welcoming addition to the series as Mobius. Unfortunately, he does not say his iconic, wow, once. Gugu and Badara is wonderful as the cunning and formidable Ravona Renslayer as her performance was truly astounding. I'm not too entirely familiar with Sofia DiMartino, 
but she pulls off a splendid performance for her character of Sylvie. I could name off other talented actors in this series, but it's just way too many to list. Either way, everyone did a phenomenal job. Other than the fact that Loki's power is being toned down, I can't think of anything else that I didn't like. Unlike some, I didn't have any discrepancies with a certain controversial part with the Infinity Stones during the first episode, because if you just watch the episode, it clearly tells you why they don't work when outside of their own timeline. On that aside, I completely had a blast with this first season, and I cannot wait for more. Overall, Loki is a magnificent show through and through that is not to be missed if you consider yourself a fan of the character and the future of the MCU itself. Not everyone will agree with me on this, and that's okay. But I think that Marvel has struck gold when they developed this show. The future MCU projects are on the same level of quality of this or possibly even better, then I'm ready to buckle myself up for another welcoming adventure. I give this season of Loki an A. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Keep up my real reviews.